Hey everyone, April Dunham from Microsoft here. In this video, we're going to be talking about building autonomous agents with Copilot Studio. Agents exist on a spectrum with a variety of capabilities. And all agents have the same set of components, but it's your specific use case and complexity that determines where that sets across the spectrum. On one side of the spectrum, we have agents focused on retrieval. Now these are designed with specific instructions on how to behave, their personality, their overall objectives, and they follow predetermined guidelines that you set. We can also have task-based agents, which are connected to specific workflows or processes. These operate based on knowledge, skills, and rules-based automation. And their primary purpose is to automate repetitive tasks. And on the other end of the spectrum, what we're talking about today is autonomous agents. What sets these apart is they operate independently, dynamically planning and learning from the process. They can adapt to changing conditions and make decisions without constant human intervention. And these autonomous agents can begin work based on more than just a chat request from a human. They can be triggered by events using the ecosystem of connectors that the Power Platform has to offer. So this could be when a new item is added to a line of business application, emails arriving, form responses, files being created, or even running on a schedule. These agents dynamically decide the best path forward at runtime, meaning that each agent flow is unique depending on the situation. As the creators of these agents, we provide the instructions, knowledge, and actions that act as the guardrails, and we can monitor the agent's performance to improve it over time. So now that we have a better understanding of what autonomous agents are, let's take a look at a use case and how to build one. We're going to be using Copilot Studio to help us with the portion of our onboarding process. When new employees are onboarded, they need to request a device. Instead of handling all of this manually, we're going to build an autonomous agent that can help us process all of these incoming hardware requests via email. This agent will go out to Dataverse where we store information about our approved devices and automatically update our inventory in our backend system and create a purchase order and send a confirmation email back to the requester. So let's see how we can build this. We're going to go over to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. You'll need a work account to log in and access to Copilot Studio. And if you don't have access, you can get a free 30-day trial to try out all of this capability. To create our new agent, we're going to select the Create tab in the left-hand corner and New Agent. To create this agent, we could use this chat-based experience to build that out, or we can choose Skip to Configure and build it out manually. The first thing that we need to do here is give our agent a name. So I'm going to call this Device Procurement Agent. You also want to make sure to put a description of what this agent should be doing. So I'm going to put in this that says, this agent assists with the onboarding related task of new device procurement for employees. And you see, as we fill in each of these inputs, it's updating what this agent is supposed to do on the right hand side. Now, perhaps the most important part of this whole process is right here in your instructions. Having detailed, well thought out instructions is really the key to making sure that your agent works as expected. We're going to need to list what's going to kick off this agent and all of the different related tasks and how it should complete those tasks. I've already written out some instructions here and we'll take a look at what I have. In your instructions, you're going to want to start off with describing what's going to kick off this particular autonomous agent. So what kicks this off is you're going to receive a request to procure a new device for a new employee. Now we start listing out all of the individual tasks that we want our agent to help with. The first task that I want help with is device type assignment. So I'm going to put in an example here that I want the agent to ask the new employee what type of device they want, pulling from the list of options in the knowledge source approved devices list. Only include items where the inventory count is greater than zero, meaning it's in stock. Notice a few things that I did here. One, I explicitly listed in quotes the name of the knowledge source that I want the agent to use. This is going to help it be able to call the right knowledge. And you'll have control over the names of the knowledge sources that you add as we move along in the process of setting up this agent. So we'll look at that in a little bit. I'm giving it some constraints here. So not only am I telling it what knowledge source to pull from, I'm asking it to look at a particular field, the inventory count in that knowledge source and only show items where it's greater than zero and letting it know that that means it's in stock. Now we'll move on to the second step, which is the inventory check. I want this to check the same knowledge source of approved devices, but this time verify that the device the user selected is in stock, meaning that the value is greater than zero. I also want to do another thing in this step, which is to check the inventory count to see if it's less than five. Then I wanted to send an email to the inventory manager to let them know that it is low stock. 
For step three, I wanted to go and procure the device. For this, I already have an existing workflow in Power Automate where I can go and automatically add an item into our Dataverse table that submits a procurement item. So for this step, I'm just going to have it run that flow so it can handle that automation of creating the procurement item. Next, I wanted to be able to use another knowledge source that I'm going to add later on to be able to look up details about the devices. I'll point this to the Microsoft website where it has information about all of the different Surface laptop devices and ask it to return key information from there like the RAM, memory, storage, and battery life. And our final step to automate this whole process is to send a confirmation email to the new employee, letting them know that their device has been procured. Notice throughout all of my instructions, anywhere that I'm referencing a particular knowledge source I plan to use or an action, I'm putting that in quotes. And I'm being as detailed as I can as far as letting it know what particular information I wanted to pull from the different knowledge sources and what I wanted to do. So before you write your instructions, you do need to have a good idea of what knowledge sources you plan on bringing into the agent and what specific actions you want those to take. So if you're not exactly sure what specific actions or knowledge types are supported or available, you might actually go through and add all of that in first and then come back and write your instructions. So you don't have to do this right off the bat. You can always come back and add these later on. So we're going to stick with these instructions and we're going to click create and we'll move on to adding in and filling the gaps with our knowledge and our actions. Because right now we've only provided the instructions of what we wanted to do. Now we need to equip it with the tools and the resources that it needs to be able to make this happen. So we do that with knowledge and actions. All right, we have our device procurement agent and it's carried over our name, description, and instructions. First important step before we move on to filling this out with knowledge and actions is to turn on orchestration. This allows generative AI to determine how to respond to the different users and events. To finish building this out, we need to equip it with knowledge, which are different data sources where it can get relevant information that it needs, actions, which will allow our agents to perform different tasks, and a trigger, which allows our agent to be able to activate when a certain event happens. Let's start with a trigger because we want this to be able to kick off when an email is received. So to do this, we'll select the add trigger button and we'll select this option for when a new email arrives using the Office 365 Outlook connector. And we're going to make sure to change all these default names to something more relevant. So for the trigger name, I'm going to say when a new device procurement email arrives. So this trigger is going to need to sign into these two connectors here for Copilot Studio and Office 365 Outlook. So we're just gonna confirm that and click next. Now we can fill out some additional filters. So this is where we're going to want to use some of these options here to be able to limit what would trigger this event. So we don't want our agent to kick off every time an email is received. We only want this to kick off if the subject of the email has the words device procurement in it. So to filter that out, I'm going to go to this subject filter and just type device procurement. And now we can create this trigger. So now our trigger is created. And one thing to point out when we're using these triggers is it's actually using Power Automate in the back end. So what this has done, if we click on these three dots, we can actually edit this in Power Automate and see the flow that it's created for us to handle this trigger execution. So it's using that to orchestrate the trigger and it's returning the information back to our agent. Now that we've equipped this agent with the trigger that it needs, we can start adding some knowledge. So let's select the add knowledge button right here. And for the knowledge inside of our agent, we can either upload files directly. We can reference public website information, information stored on SharePoint, and even Dataverse knowledge, which is currently in preview. So I actually do wanna pull some knowledge from Dataverse because in Dataverse, I have a table that shows all of our approved devices. So I'm gonna select the Dataverse option and search for my table. All right, there it is. There's our approved devices list. So I'm gonna select that and click next. We'll see a preview of the information. So I'll click next again. And now we can make any adjustments that we need. Now, if you recall in our instructions, I listed out particular data sources. So I wanna make sure that whatever is here in the knowledge name matches what I put into my instructions. So I said it is the approved devices list. So that does match up, so I'm good here. So now we can just click add and that will be able to be referenced in those instructions. So we've given it some of our internal data on Dataverse. Now let's give it some public knowledge. So go back to add knowledge and choose a public website this time. And I want to point it to the Microsoft.com website with the Windows page up so it can see all the information about the different devices. So I'll click add. 
We'll just confirm that site and click add one more time and we're good to go. And one more thing to point out about these knowledge sources, if we go back into say the Microsoft website that we added is the knowledge description. That is important to fill out because that helps give your agent some additional information to go off of as far as when to use this particular knowledge source. So rather than relying on the default description that it provides us here, we could override this with some additional information. So in the instructions I provided, I specifically wanted this to be able to pull information about things like RAM, memory, storage, and battery life. So I'll put that also in the knowledge description of this particular knowledge source so that it has that information about when to pull from this particular source and what to get. So now that we have that, I'll click save. And let's go back to knowledge and we'll do the same thing for our approved devices list and we'll give it a more detailed description. So I'll keep everything that it has here and just add one line to the end saying that this knowledge source answers questions about this table regarding the remaining inventory count for each device. And then we'll click save to apply that. So let's reference our instructions again and see how we're doing as far as giving it everything it needs to be able to execute on these instructions. We've provided it with the approved devices list with our Dataverse table. And we provided it with the knowledge source. Although I see one issue here, we do need to make sure that the name matches up. So I need to change the name of the knowledge source to Microsoft Surface Laptop Devices. So I'm going to go back into that knowledge source and we'll just update the name and click save. So now that will match up nicely, but I see we're still missing a couple things. Namely, I want this to be able to send an email. And it looks like two different emails, one for low inventory and one that's a confirmation back to the user. So those are specific tasks that we're asking it to do. So that is where we want to call an action. So if we select the add an action button, we can add an action to have it send an email. So we can search for Office 365 Outlook to filter down the list of actions and we'll select the send an email V2 action. So now we'll click next and we need to fill out some additional information. So the name for this action is really important because it needs to match our instructions again. So instead of just send an email v2, we're gonna call this send confirmation email. And the description is important as well as we saw with our knowledge sources and how we put detailed descriptions. We wanna do the same thing for our actions. So I'm gonna put in a detailed description I have here that this operation sends an email message to the new employee confirming the procurement of their device. For your actions, you'll have inputs and outputs. So for this particular send an email action, we see we have the two subject and body inputs all required. And we have control if we wanna put in something custom in any of these, we can click on say the subject and we can either choose to dynamically fill with the best option or we can set as a value and hard code it. We're going to leave it on the dynamically fill with best option because we're going to rely on our agent to fill this information in for us. So now we'll just add this action and we want to do this one more time for the other email that we wanted to send out if there is a low inventory. So we'll select add an action again, do another search for Office 365 Outlook and choose the send an email action again. We'll click next and again, we'll give it a more relevant name. So I'll say send low inventory email. So I'm just gonna modify the description here to say this operation sends an email message to the inventory manager when the inventory is low. And same thing here, we're just going to leave all of the inputs and outputs as is, and we'll add that action. And there's just one more action that we want to add. So in addition to be able to call all of these different connectors directly and have them do things like send an email, we can have it call and execute a flow in Power Automate to do different things for us as well. I've already built out a flow in Power Automate that goes and adds a new row to another Dataverse table to put in the procurement request. In this flow, the trigger is to run a flow from Copilot, and I'm going to have two inputs here to pull in the employee details and the device details. I'll use this get user profile action to get additional details about that employee, and then I'll call the add a row to go and add that device procurement information to our table. To find that flow, I'm going to click on these three dots and choose the flow option and select the name of the flow here. And then we'll just select add action. All right, so if we look at our actions, we have the two send an email actions for the low inventory alert and for the confirmation, and it's calling our flow to be able to go and add in that procurement item. So we should have everything that we need for our agent. Now we can give it a test. To do that, we'll scroll down here to our trigger section and click on this test trigger button. And now we'll just need to initiate a new procurement email with that subject in the filter to test this out. 
So it looks like an email was received with that subject of device procurement. And if I go back to our agent, we see that here in our test. So we can select that and choose start testing. And this will kick off our test. Now we'll see on the left hand side here an activity map. This is going to let us follow along with what the agent is doing. It looks like it's checking some knowledge sources. And as I asked in the instructions, it's going to ask the user what device they want. So this is pulling from that Dataverse table that we provided of approved devices and giving me a few options to select from. So the agents that you build could be truly autonomous with no interaction, or you can customize them to have interaction if needed, like we're doing here. So I'm gonna paste in my response. I want the Surface Laptop Go 3. And it looks like on that one, since it's showing us the inventory counts, that there's only four units available. So that should kick off the low inventory email, which it looks like it just did because I can follow along in the activity map and see that it did that. And now it's going back and checking the knowledge sources again, because this is where it's going to get the information from the Microsoft website to get the additional details about the device. And now we can see the last step based on the instructions we provided, which is to send that confirmation email. So it's really nice to have this built-in testing where you can follow along in real time to see all of the actions that the agent is taking. Now I can tell that I have a few new emails based off of our agent. One is the low inventory alert. So since that count was less than five, as we instructed the agent to check for, it sent an email to me, the inventory manager, letting me know that it's low. And since I'm also the requester of the device, it looks like I got a confirmation email letting me know that the device has been procured. So it took the device I selected based off of the available devices in our Dataverse list, which is the Surface Laptop Go. And it even went to the Microsoft website we provided as a knowledge source to get additional information about that device. And if we go to our Dataverse table for a device procurement, we should see a new item in here for Megan Connors for the Surface Laptop 3. And that was done using the Power Automate flow that we created that we called from our agent.